Hello, Planet Earth. Welcome to my YouTube channel. We're at IDK, my BFF Jill730. I'm Preston L. Young, wishing you warm salutations and congratulations. As always, you've made your way to the Buffington Post. You are invited! Alright, so today it's time for the Buffington Post recap and review for Buff the Vampire Slayer Season 10, issue number 27. It's On Your Own Part 2, which is subtitled The Center Cannot Hold. Alright, so we've got two covers. We've got a variant cover by Rebecca Isaacs, which has Xander and Dawn trying to make the best of their new hell neighborhood that they've landed in. And we've got the more artsy one. I think it's by Steve Morris, but don't let me miscredit someone. Yes, it's by Steve Morris. It's the more artsy, traditional cover. It's got a, like, shape-shifting vampire silhouette going on in the background with Willow overlapped with the military and Buffy and Spike on opposite sides. We'll get into it. But first, previously on Buff the Vampire Slayer. All throughout season 10, we've been writing these new rules of magic into the vampire book that Giles bestowed Buffy with after he died, but now he's been resurrected as a preteen, he's fine. So yeah, Buffy and Spike uh, restarted their relationship fresh now that he's got his soul and she's got this freedom about her, but she finds out that of course she's not as free as she would like to be because she was getting some help from this magical council to write the new rules of magic and then, oops, the Hoffrin killed everybody who's not him in the magical council and absorbed all of their powers, stole the book, and has decided that, eh, he's gonna just control reality from now on. Willow has been, ugh, she hasn't even been hit or missed, she's just been missing all season. She's dating this character called Lake who is involved with the military higher-ups and, uh, yeah, the military and the Magical Council and the vampires and the Hoffrin, they've all been kind of working together, but we're going to see how that shakes out now that the Hoffrin's betrayed everybody. Giles, in his little preteen body, he's been kind of having some identity issues, and so he decided he didn't want to deal with his problems for a while, and he skipped off into Fairyland and made a girlfriend over there, and, uh, yeah, the Hoffrin killed the Queen of the Fairies in issue number 25, so that's a thing. Andrew spent the midsection of the season trying to find a way to bring Jonathan back to life, and that didn't really work out, but the sculptor actually allowed for Jonathan to have this body. No thanks to Andrew, though, because he actually double-crossed Jonathan slash the sculptor and killed the sculptor, so what's going on with, you know, fleshy Jonathan, we really don't know. Dawn saved reality from getting totally, like, hellified by using her super duper key powers that she has in certain other dimensions to close off a portal, but now she and Xander are on the other side of that portal in hell, which is less than fun, especially since we found out that Wolfram and Hart are currently in that dimension as well. So, let's see how it all shakes out in Buffy the Vampire Slayer Season 10, Issue Number 27. It's On Your Own, Part 2, subtitled, The Center Cannot Hold. Here we go. It is time. Yes, no, maybe... The issue opens up and we are in Anara, the hell dimension that Xander and Dawn are in, and actually Xander has figured out how to use the demon's connection into our world to actually just kind of fudge a cable connection, and they are all watching Game of Thrones, and it's really funny because the demons are actually rooting for Joffrey. <laughs> Dawn talks about how happy he's made the demons, and how the demons are trying to make her happy, they're literally worshipping her, and Xander's gone out of his way to try and make her happy, but she misses being home. She misses Buffy and Willow and school and all that good stuff, and there are all these different ways that they could go home, but Xander's like, yeah, we shouldn't go through those portals because Willow said if we leave here, it'll be nearly impossible to find our way back, so let's just sit tight. Well, lo and behold, Wolfram Hart sends Lila Morgan as a representative to go and kind of like treat with Xander and Dawn and make a deal with them to get back home. Lila says, yeah, girl, all you have to do is close off a few portals, open a few portals here, let us have a little bit of access to that book that your sister has where she's rewriting reality, and we'll totally call it even, and you'll be home. So Xander and Dawn aren't going to have any of that, but now they have the problem of Wolfram and Hart being kind of their next-door neighbors, which is a problem. So, back in our dimension, Buffy is pointing her finger at everybody but herself as to the reason that De Hoffren now has the book. Now, it will take De Hoffren a little bit of time to unravel the spells that Willow put on it to protect it, but, you know, Willow's not going to sit here and take Buffy's blame. She's saying, look, you are the reason that we had the Magical Council helping us write the book, because you didn't want to go through with your responsibilities, so why don't you own up to what you've done here too, Buff? 
But Buffy's not hearing any of it. She says, you, Willow, and you, Giles, have just been doing whatever you want to do with your new love interest. You've been totally, like, not focused on what's going on. But Giles isn't going to hear it. He says, you wanted to be responsible for the book, but when it came down to it, you just used all the excuses you could to continue to not grow up. So why don't you come on and grow up, Buffy, and assume responsibility for your actions. So Spike, the peacemaker, William, that's what William means. Wilhelm means peacemaker, like one who makes peace, by the way. He's saying, hey, let's not point fingers at each other and blame each other because we will definitely lose. Why don't you guys go and figure out what you can do and Buffy and I will hit around, try and figure out what the what is, and I'll even call Andrew. But Buffy's like, it's just pointless. Everything looks fucking pointless by this point. So Xander and Don are not just going to sit tight and wait for Buffy and Willow to find time to find them, and uh, they're also not going to sit around and wait for Wolfram and Hart to come and like get them, and so... They are taking a few demons to escort them through the different dimensions because, you know, Dawn's powers are going to be kind of wonky wherever they go. So they leave Anara behind and they end up in a new, crazier demon world and uh, it's not looking too cute there, but that's just where we leave Xander and Dawn. But it turns out that Lila was actually just setting them up. Turns out Wolfram and Hart can't get back into our world and they are going to basically follow Xander and Dawn and all the different portals that the key creates and closes and find their way back home through there. So Willow goes and fills Lake in on the whole De Hoffren situation and Lake and the military just send missiles at De Hoffren. Which was not a good plan because they essentially just blow up as soon as they get shot off and De Hoffren comes on all the screens and he's like, yeah, I could have rerouted your missiles right back at you or I could have just exploded them as soon as you were about to do that, and so why don't you guys fuck off, because if you try and mess with me again, I'll come after you with a vengeance. So Willow lets it slip that she and the rest of the Scooby gang are the ones who allowed for De Hoffren basically to get all of this power by writing it into the book, and that gets her in trouble with the military, but she says, look, like even the powers that we gave to the Magical Council couldn't do what De Hoffren just did. He's got to be using his vengeance demon wish fulfillment powers. And in order to do that, he would need a vengeful human. Speaking of vengeful humans, we pick up with Andrew, who has found Jonathan. And Jonathan is none too pleased that Andrew was just going to let him die after they killed the sculptor. But Jonathan has made a deal with De Hoffren that if De Hoffren will make Jonathan into an immortal vengeance demon, then he will help De Hoffren with his wish fulfillment. And his first task before becoming a vengeance demon is to prove that he can, you know, really hurt somebody and take out his own vengeance. And so Jonathan and DeHoffren show everybody basically talking smack about Jonathan behind his back, whether it's Buffy and Willow and Spike, or even old Clive, the, uh, the Professor X looking guy. So Andrew is feeling like total shit about himself, and DeHoffren's like, yes, girl, yes, that's how we do it in the Vengeance Clan. Don't kill when you can hurt. And Jonathan says, oh, so we're not going to kill the Scoobies? And he says, well, if they get on our way, we might kill one, because God knows those suckers can't deal with any of their friends dying. So back in Fairyland, it turns out that the Queen of the Fairies and her wards are not going to, like, team up to go against DeHoffren, even though their queen just died. They're like, yeah, girl, we make love, not war, like holla back. And Giles says, you're just running away from your problems. And his little fairy girlfriend says, yeah, that's what we do here. That's the whole reason you were here in the first place, Giles. All right, so remember Archduke Sebastus from season five of Angel in the Circle of the Black Thorn? He drinks the PP Demon's blue, like, uh, blood stuff. Yeah, well, apparently his successor is now in the Circle of the Black Thorn, and Buffy is basically going in and roughing up her place to try and get some information about DeHoffren. She basically says, we've all got our palms in the air all across the different dimensions, and uh, apparently we've got you to thank for that, so thanks, honey. So Buffy's taking her frustrations out on everybody. Spike is trying to be the head of reason, saying, hey, girl, like, we can't just keep knocking down all these doors and getting the same answer. We got to think outside the box. And Buffy just rounds on him, and she says, Oh, you just want to give up, huh? You just want to give up? Well, maybe we should call Angel back, because Angel's not the type to want to give up. Well, that does it for Spike, and he is out of here. And uh, the Circle of the Blackthorn lady's like, Ooh, get him back here, and get him to take off his shirt. 
So Buffy goes to talk to Spike about, you know, her being a bitch and feeling like everything's just so all over the place. We got Giles hanging out in Woodland Sprite Land. We got Willow playing in Lakeland and Xander and Donna are in fucking hell and she's just taking it out on him and she's sorry and all this good stuff. She's wishing for like a big bad to point her pointy stick at and kill so that this will all be over. But Spike says, you know, this isn't a fairy tale. This isn't like some magical quest of a story where you just get to have like these simple things. It's not so simple. We're not children anymore, Buffy. Well, Buffy doesn't like that. She kind of lashes out at him, but then she catches herself and he says, you know what, Buffy? I think with everything that's going on and everything that's going on between us, like maybe it's time we took a break. And that's where we end the issue. Holy shit! Bobby cannot catch a break. She certainly doesn't need to take a break from Spike. Like, I get it. I can totally see why Spike is like, Dude, you need to chill the fuck out and just take your, like, crazies elsewhere. Ah, uh, Buffy. Ugh. Buffy, all season, she's been wagging her finger and being a bitch, and it's finally catching up to her, and I'm liking it. I'm liking that, uh, this hubris has caught up with Buffy. It's like I was saying in the last issue, like, you can't just blame your problems on everybody else, Buffy. You gave to Hoffman these powers, like, suck it up. Like, own up to it. It's it's just that simple. Like, let's get this shit taken care of, and let's get your shit correct, Buffy, because you... Ah, uh, Buffy. I... I ugh. It's good. It's good stuff. Because, you know, I love tearing Buffy down because she's so strong and, like, up there, and she's so fucking perfect, and... We will return for the second half of Days of Our Lives in just a moment.